Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparedest room before it and did cause it to grow. Mm. You did cause it to take deep root and filled the land. The, the, the 14th verse, return, we beseech thee, O God. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine and the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. Jeremiah 2 and 20. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands and thou saidest I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine under me? And the people of God said, Amen. We will derive our subject from the 14th verse of the 80th Psalms. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Lift your hands toward heaven, if you will. And just repeat our subject. Cry to the Lord. We're not going to bother the neighbor right now. But look, at you, look up toward heaven and say, Lord, visit this vine. <clears throat> now, if you know the subject, now that you know the subject, say it like you really want God to do something for you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, visit this vine. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. It is amazing how God starts with so very little and creates something so very great. As a matter of fact, the more you know about God, the more you understand his character. When the revelator saw the resurrected Jesus in all of his glory, he, he, he thought he knew Jesus because he had walked on the shores of Galilee with him. He thought he knew Jesus because he had shared three intense years of his life in hands-on training. He thought he knew Jesus because he had laid in his breast he had walked with him as far as he could. He was on the boat when Jesus calmed the sea. He thought he knew Jesus because he saw him feed 5,000. He saw him heal and cleanse the leopards. And so he thought he knew Jesus because he was there when he led them as far as Bethany and breathed on them and then ascended into heaven. He thought he knew Jesus. But then when God took him in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard a voice that sounded like many waters, he fell to his feet as a dead man and then asked the question, who are you? <laughs> uh, 
as great as God has been in our lives, I want you to understand all we know about God does not compare to all he wants to show us about himself. And when he saw Jesus, he said, Lord, who are you? And Jesus exclaimed, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But he said something about his character that, that we had not understood. He said, I am he which was, which is, and which is to come. And so when we think of God, we cannot confine him to the circle of time, but understand that he sits outside of the circle of time in eternity. And what God has for us would blow our minds if we would allow him to reveal who we are in him. Now, a lot of people do not understand what it means to have a God-like view of yourself. When you have a God-like view of yourself, you do not walk in arrogance of your own ability, but you do walk in what God has said about you. For I have discovered if you do not say what God says about you, you will never accomplish what God has assigned for you to do. So we have a lot of people that walk in the shadows of their past that are limited by their education and their ability when God never intended your ability to be an issue. God didn't call you because you were so wonderful. Quite the contrary, God called you because you needed him so bad. Y'all gonna make me work here this evening. And so whenever God decides to do a great work, he always uses that individual that is the most unlikely to succeed. And the reason he uses the individual that is the most unlikely to succeed, because if we don't lose our mind, when he begins to elevate us, we will always give him the glory because we recognize he did not give us what we deserved. He in fact give, gave us what we did not deserve. Lean on somebody and say, I'm not supposed to be sitting in here. I didn't. Ain't no way in the world, if you would have knew my history, if you would have knew what was in my heart, there's no way in the world I'd be sitting up here with these wonderful hats and with a bishop collar and a shirt on. Ain't no way in the world God could have took me from where I was. I didn't have a clue as to what God had in store for me. But because I let God be God, I wish I had some honest folk in the house tonight. The, the ability, listen, listen to what the psalmist said. The psalmist said that he took a vine and brought a, a vine. He just, he just clipped a little, little something, something out of Egypt. Hey! Pharaoh didn't have any idea what he was letting go. He just let go, just let go a little, 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 little something. Lord, lean on somebody and say, you shouldn't have let me go. I know a lot of people, when they look at where you are, the, the, the people think that you're expendable. But touch somebody and say, you shouldn't have let me go. You should have let that other person. You should. I don't hear nobody talking to me tonight. Uh -huh. You never know what God is going to do with an individual. And a lot of times, we let folk go that we should have held on to. Wish I had a happy church here tonight. God said, I just, I just cut out a little vine. Just cut out a little, a little something. What nothing fair. By the time the last plague hit, Pharaoh said, let them folk go. Let, let them go. They don't even have a map, but let them go. They don't have an agenda, but let them go. They don't even have a boat, but let them go. They don't have one piece of artillery, but let them go. They don't know where they're going. They're following a man with a stick and a stutter, but let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. And I want you to understand. Lord, help me here tonight. I want you to understand something that you don't need to worry about what folk think about you. 
I just want to know am I in the right church I just you don't need to concern yourself when folk want to put you out and throw you away if you recognize who God is God put out a little vine but there were some characteristics about that vine Lord I feel like preaching now do I Bishop do I have time here uh, he one thing about being in the care of God is that God will do stuff for you he he took out a little vine but it's wonderful to be in the care taking of God it's it's wonderful to have God watch out for you yeah, because when he calls you out what I've discovered is that uh, whatever God ordains God sustains if y'all help me I'll preach in a little while whatever God ordains God sustains and a lot of times we worry about stuff that we shouldn't worry about the only thing you need to know is if God called you because if God called you he'll do stuff for you mm, and, and it, it, let me give you a make a little footnote here if you want God to do most stuff for you then act like you need him a little more Ah, the vine, the vine came out of Egypt. Didn't have a plan, but they had a God. And uh, what God began to do was put folk out. He'll put folk out for you. Y'all ain't talking back to me, but that's all right, that's all right. But, but, uh, I remember Pastor McClurkin when we first started perfecting, we didn't have, I know a lot of people say, a whole lot of folk go to this church because he got, he sings. And that wasn't true at all. Uh, when we started, we had eight people, four of whom I clothed and fed, so they didn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> we had four others and two of them are here tonight. And, and folk did not expect to say well the folks coming and I, I have to say this I have to make when we started Bishop P.A. Brooks was the first somebody I hadn't talked to him but he sent a check for five hundred dollars and I said Lord I want to thank this man for his generosity and for his vision but I want you to understand that when we came out so Pastor McClurkin and I we were looking for buildings you know and uh, I told him I said I said Donnie I said, uh, the Lord told me two things. He told me church, and he told me Detroit. And when we went into the realtor's office, there were no church. There was one church, and uh, that church belongs now to Pastor J. Drew Sheard, but there was one church on the market, and, uh, and it was way too big for me. I, had, I told you I had eight people. And, so, and then there was no other church in the city. So we're riding in the car. And he says to me, well, what you going to do? I said, I don't know. See, preachers, a lot of times we think we got to figure it out. We don't have to figure it out. Just, just be divine. And so it is that uh, he asked me, what, what do we need to do? I said, I don't know. He said, well, what you? I said, I don't know. I know he told me church and he told me Detroit. He said, well, we got to get. I said, he didn't tell me that he told me church and he told me Detroit. He said, well, what's going to happen? I said, well, God going to have to put somebody out there in church. <laughs> and he got angry at me. He said, I ain't never heard nothing that stupid in my life. I said, well, what you want me to say? Two weeks on the front page of the Detroit News, the archdiocese closed 42 churches. I looked at him, I went and got that paper, I said, God just wanted me to have a choice. When you are his vine, he'll put folks out. 
I don't hear nobody talking to me. I don't have to fight with nobody. I don't have to argue with nobody. I don't have to prove who I am. All I have to be is the vine and tell him how much I need him. I wish I had somebody here to put those hands together and give God praise in this house. He'll do stuff for you. Bless the name of the Lord. He said that he'll put the heathen out. Put the heathen out so that he can plant you. All right, I, I'm going to close. We got some preachers here tonight. We can just shout the times get better. And so what he'll do, the psalmist says, is that he will prepare room. God will manipulate a circumstance. <laughs> oh, he'll manipulate a circumstance so that he can plant you. Because what I've discovered about God, God in the scriptures, he never speaks of prosperity without speaking of posterity. I'll say that again. The scriptures never talk about prosperity without speaking of posterity. Because God is not interested in a temporary fix. That's the reason whenever they talked about the God of Abraham, they didn't stop with Abraham, but they called him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because God not only wants to bless you, but he wants to bless those folks that's coming up past after you. He wants to bless your seed and the seed after them and after them and after them. And I need somebody to say, I know that's right. You didn't get here on your own. So I sit here and look at this presidium of this great church and look at all these bishops that were sons of bishops and sons of pastors and sons of elders in this church. It's the way it should be. Because God never speaks of prosperity without speaking of posterity. He wants to give you room. He wants to make a little room for you. Let, let me move on in my body and then I'll come to my clothes. But lean on somebody and say, but you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because in the historicity of Israel, we discover that they had a proclivity for depending on themselves. That after you are established, after you start to feel your oats, have a few good years, after you become secure in your investments, and once you have so many people in your church, you lose your need of God. I might as well preach while I'm at it. And uh, Jeremiah cries and laments to us tonight. He says, I just want you to remember how it used to be. I want you to remember how you got out of what you were in. Remember when you were trained, chained to stuff, hooked to stuff and had habits you couldn't break. When you got stuck in the rut and didn't know how to get out of it. When you were caught in a vicious cycle. When the devil had such a grip on you that you were about to lose your mind. He said, I broke the yoke. God said, uh, I bursted the bands. I'm the one 
that got you out of what you were in when you didn't see when you didn't see how you were going to get out of it he said I'm the one and, and when I came to get you out you made me a promise yes you did you told me mm, that if I got you out of this, you would live right. I wish I had an amen in the house. Oh, our bishop waxed eloquent this morning as he told us to earnestly contend for the faith. He, he told us that if we're going to be sanctified, then we can't live any kind of life and and when God broke the bands and destroyed the yoke, we made a promise to God. And we told God that we would not transgress. But because God never sleeps or slumbers, he sees. What I love about God, just, just preach with me for a moment. Tap your neighbor gently on the shoulder and say, you didn't get away. Ah. Uh, want you to understand that the eyes of the Lord are in every place and he's beholding the evil I wish I had half a church here and the good uh, you, you might think you got over but you didn't get away because God says that midnight is as noonday before him and the eyes of the Lord go about and he's to and fro in all of the earth and he checking it out. What's so wonderful about God is that God and the reason this place ought to erupt in great praise is because even when God saw me, he didn't tell on me, but he covered me. He covered me. No, 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 no. You know, don't play with me like that. Don't, uh, don't play with Look at your neighbor and teach them. You say, you didn't get away. Say, but the reason you ought to erupt in hilarious praise is because even when he saw you, he covered you. I wait for that one praise person to praise God because he covered He's asking, he says, I, I planted you a noble vine. Uh, look at somebody and say, you better than that. You're better than that. Tell them you're better than that. The reason you don't have to live that way is because you're, you're better than that. Mm, 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 mm. You have to recognize how God planted you. He gave you an anointing that was beyond anyone's expectation. He gave you, he planted you a noble vine. He planted you somebody special. He, he, he intended for you to not be at the back, but at the front. He told you when you were coming out that you would be above only and never beneath. When you came out, he told you I was going to bless you wherever you ended up. Uh, lean on somebody and say you're better than that you're better than that my, my, my goal tonight my mission tonight is to call somebody to come to themselves uh, can I talk to you for a little while longer uh, that, 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 that prodigal the Bible says he came to himself and what he recognized is I'm better than this I'm in a mess right now, but touch somebody and say, I'm better than this. I'm better than, this. I'm broke, but I'm better than this. I'm sick, but I'm better than this. I'm, I'm discouraged, but I'm better than this. I'm at the back of the line, but touch somebody and tell them I'm better than this. Let me rush to my clothes. After discovering and see that the prophet asked, say, how did you turn into such a degenerate plant? How do we let it go so far? Seems as if we would have caught ourselves earlier. 
Hmm. I feel like preaching here. Bishop, can I have just... How, how did we let it get so out of hand? How did it get so bad, church? We're better than this. Ooh, all of this saint on saint crime. We're better than this. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Ah, touch somebody and say, we better than this. We better than this. Ah, God planted us a noble vine. Ah, he planted us somebody. We don't, we don't need all of this bickering and arguing and division and can't stand you and don't like her. And, and, and you know, we, we, we better. We're better. We're better than this. How did we let it go so far? Sometimes God has to let you hit bottom for you to recognize who you are. Bishop Williams, sometimes God has to let us go way down for us to recognize what we had. And, and let me say it like the, 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 the psalmist, I, I'm going to let you go. I didn't mean to take all of this time, but let me say it like David said. And David said, it was good that I was afflicted. It takes a mature saint. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It takes somebody that's been through something to come to the point where it say, I blew it. Yes, Shanda. And where I am, I deserve to be. And what I'm experiencing, I deserve to experience. But it was good. Because when I hit rock bottom, I got my mind back. Whew. I need somebody to put those hands together and give God praise. Mind back. And now in Psalms 80, Asaph begins to write and says, Lord, turn us. Turn us again. Turn us again. And if you get me back on the right track, I'll be saved. If you can... Uh, just order my steps. If you can order my steps according to your word. I don't want you to feel uh, afraid to come to God and talk to him. Says, Lord, I want you to look down from heaven. And I want you to look at me. The only thing I'm asking you to do is visit this vine. Just, just visit me. Just, and I don't want you to be afraid because of the character of God. I want you to know something about God. And if I would borrow the words of Anne Graham Lotz, then I would tell you that God is enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally gracious. He is imperially powerful. He is impartially merciful. He is God's son. He's the sinner's savior. He's the captive's ransom. He is the breath of life. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of himself. He is august and he is unique. He is unparalleled and he is unprecedented. He is undisputed and he is undefiled. He is unsurpassed and he is unshakable. He is the lofty idea in philosophy. He is the highest personality in psychology. He is the supreme subject in literature and he is the unavoidable problem in higher criticism. He is the fundamental doctrine in theology. He is the cornerstone, the caps 
cornerstone and the stumbling stone of all religions. He is the miracle of the ages. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He forgives and he forgets. He creates and he cleanses. He restores and he rebuilds. He heals and he helps. He reconciles and he redeems. He comforts and he carries. He lifts and he loves. He is the God of the second chance, the fat chance, the slim chance, and the no chance. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the aged. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. He is the key to knowledge and he is the fountain of life. He is the wellspring of joy. He guards the young. He seeks the stray. He finds the lost. He guides the faithful. He rights the wrong. He avenges the abused. He defends the weak. He comforts the oppressed. He welcomes the prodigal. He heals the sick. He cleanses the dirty. He restores the failure. He mends the broken. He blesses the poor. He He clothes the naked. He satisfies the hungry. I need somebody to give him praise in here. He elevates the humble. He forgives the sinner and he raises the dead. You don't have to be afraid to come to him because his office is manifold and his promise is sure. His life is matchless and his goodness is limitless. He, his mercy is enough and his grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He is the storehouse of wisdom. He is the foundation of faith. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway to peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. He is the gateway to glory. He's the highway to happiness. I need somebody to give God praise. Tell somebody, do you know that's what he is? You don't have to be afraid of him because he supplies strength to the weary. And he increases power to the faint. He offers escape to the tempted. He sympathizes with the hurting. And he saves the hopeless. He shields the helpless. He sustains the homeless. He gives purpose to the aimless. He gives reason to our meaninglessness. He gives fulfillment to our emptiness. He gives light in the darkness. He comforts in the loneliness. He gives fruit in the barrenness. Future to the hopeless and life to the lifeless. He's indestructible and he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible and he's inescapable. He is invincible and he is irresistible. He is refutable. I can't get him out of my mind and I can't get him out of my heart. I can't outlive him and I can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him but found they couldn't stop him. Satan tried to tempt him but found that he couldn't trip him. Pilate examined him but found no thought in him. The Romans crucified him but couldn't take his life. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him. He had no predecessor and he'll have no successor. He's the lion and he is the lamb. He's God and he is man. I need somebody to say visit us oh God. Visit the vine. I want you to understand that God is the reason that you're here today. God is the one that planted you. God is the one that sanctified you. God is the one that baptized you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be mad with me. God did it. Lean on somebody else and say, God did it. Yes. What I like about God. Ooh. What I like about God. Oh, yes. 
What I like about God is that God is sovereign over his church. Ooh. And he planted us in the body as it pleased him. He's a seven-way king. Lean on somebody and say, he's a seven-way king. What do you mean, preacher? He's the king of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's the king of Israel. That's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. That's a moral king. He's the king of the ages. That's an eternal king. He's the king of heaven. That's a universal king. He's the king of glory. That's a celestial king. And he's the king of kings. I said he is the king of kings. And if God planted me, hallelujah, I have a little habit that I tell folk in my little church, look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm blessed and you can't do nothing about it. I said I'm blessed and you can't do anything about it. Well, Church of God in Christ, I'm here to ask you to do me a favor because I want you to know we need you. Hallelujah. Look at yourself and point to yourself and say the world needs me. Who knew that God would take a man and plant a vine 96 or 100 years ago and call it a little upstart church, the church of God in Christ. I want you to understand who you are. God planted you a noble vine. And as the bishop said today, the rest of the religious community is pattering after what goes on right here in Memphis. And you didn't have anything to do with it. But God planted you a noble vine. Look at somebody and say, I'm somebody. Now you can't say that in the arrogance of yourself because you so wonderful. No son, no man. Because God will cut you down. But I'm here to tell you it's time for us to lift our hands toward heaven and say, God, I need you to visit me. Yes, sir. I need a visitation from God. I need the sick to be healed. I need anointing back in the church. I need somebody that cares about souls. It's time for us to have a visitation. We've got to save our young people. We've got to grab the horn of the altar and tell God that it's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our being. Somebody holler back at me. I need a visitation. Say it again. I need a visitation. Everybody stand to your feet. God planted us. I'm going to say that again. I said God planted us. The apostle Paul says that we are God's plantation. We are God's husbandry. We belong to God. Grab the hand of the person standing next to you. I feel an anointing. Yes, Shata, there it is, there it is. Just let it flow from hand to hand. You didn't get where you are because you were so politically correct. Bishop talked today about 
being at the White House, I was privileged to be there with him. When I saw him come out of that back room with the president, I was so proud because he's our bishop. I say with great sincerity to every man that is on this rostrum, this great quorum of elders and college of bishops, that man, I'm happy for every one of you in here. I believe that. I say that without any personal ambition. You don't have to tell your neighbor, say, you can relax. Yeah, I don't want to be nothing. I'm not here to be anything. I'm a wonderful cheerleader. I'm, I'm a great cheerleader. I, I've had these great men like Bishop Williams, Bishop Wright, Bishop uh, uh, Brooks, Bishop Patterson, Bishop Blake. They've come, they've preached for me, and I've felt so honored. Bishop O.T. Jones, Jr., and all of you, you know who you are. God planted us. I want you to understand that, that we're in this together. That we need one another. One of the qualities, Bishop McKinney, about a vine is that it cleans. That's why God called us, Bishop Maynard. That's the reason he called us a vine, Bishop Wimbush, Bishop Hamlin, because we, we have a clinging type nature. Bishop Green, we need one another. That's the reason, no matter how upset we get, we find our way trying to clean. Because we need each other. God planted us. The dissension stops. The argument ends. The division cease because we need one another God planted this church a noble vine every head bowed Father in the name that is above every name we give you praise tonight for what you're doing we thank you for your omniscience. We praise you for what you've done for us. And we thank you because you brought us all together again. Now visit us. Ah! We're one. We're one. We're one now. God, visit us. Visit us. Visit us. Visit our homes again. Visit our churches. Visit our departments. Visit our, our auxiliaries. Visit us again. Let your anointing be our number one agenda. Let your presence be our focus. Let your kingdom be our aim in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you praise for your visitation in Jesus' name. Now listen to me, you can release the hand of the person that you're holding, but listen to me, listen to me. I want you to do something for me. There's two more things I want to do, and I'm going to give you the first one. I want you to just understand, I need the all. I need the yeah. Every hour, I need oh, 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 bless me now, oh, yeah. my Savior. I come to I want you to go to three people and what you're going to tell them is I receive my visitation after you get to that third person 
I want you to erupt in a praise that will cause the fans of the Memphis Grizzlies to pale in comparison as to what you're getting ready to do. I want you to praise God and receive that visitation that God's going to give. Now go to three people and tell them I receive my visitation. Move quickly, move quickly. Now erupt in the praise. Come on, come on, church. Come on, church. Come on here, church. And receive that visitation. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on and receive. Sunday. Come on and receive that. Let it flow throughout this the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, erupt, erupt. Come on, there's another level. There's another level. Come on and give them praise. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, Zion. Receive your meditation. Come on, Zion. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Say yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Stirring up on the inside. I feel gifts being stirred up. God is visiting old gifts. Some of his prayer. Some, I feel a prayer life being restored. He's visiting you right now. I need you to pray for a little while longer. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, 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 oh,
Mother Rivers, I feel them stirring up the dip on the inside. Oh! 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 <laughs> saying oh he's visiting you again I apologize I got to quit because I I feel oh oh Lord visit your vine visit this vine oh Lord Visit the vine. Visit the vine. Yeah. I'll talk about my Oh. Oh. I want everybody to get an offering in your hand. I'm just going to give it back to Bishop Blake because. I'm giving $300. I want everyone that can and will to share at least $100 in this offering. Give what you can. But look at your neighbor and say, I receive my visitation. And tell them, oh. People of the Lord, just step out and begin to bring your gift. Lay it before the altar. Spirit of the Lord says $100. From every saint of God who will. Come on, keep on praising him. Keep on praising him. Keep on praising him. Just step out and bring your gift. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Lift him up. Bless your name. Hallelujah. From every corner of the room, just step out and bring Place your gift before the altar. Oh, yeah. Visit us tonight. Visit us, Lord. 
visit us, Lord. Revive us again. Stir us again. Bless us again. We need you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I need you. I need you. I need your anointing. I need your spirit. I need your presence. Just one more time. Move in the light. One more time. Stir me. One more time. Revive me. One more time. I need you. Does anybody need him tonight? Tell him, Lord, I need you. Come on and sow that seed. Come on and sow that seed. Hallelujah. 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 Step out, everybody. Don't leave. Don't leave. Come and bring your gift. As I'm